Hey, how's it going? I'm Coach Steve, and today we're going to be talking about two of the most elemental concepts in soccer, space and pressure. Whether you're a coach trying to plan out your strategy or you're a player looking to make better decisions on the soccer field, space and pressure are two of the most important things to consider. All right, what do we mean by space and pressure? Well, when we say space, we mean open space. That's an area on the field that has no other player from the opposing team. And then when we talk about pressure, that's kind of the opposite. That's an area on the field that has at least one player from the opposing team. Here is an excruciatingly simple example to illustrate that. If we put one player on the field, they have the ball. If there are no other players on the field, then everywhere on this field is open space, even the area where the player is standing. If we drop a defending player in, now we have an area of pressure. And everywhere else is space, outside here and here, behind the defender, also behind the player with the ball. The further this player gets away from the pressure, generally speaking, the more space they have. Imagine these two players playing against each other, 1v1, and we were to move the red team player here. We can probably guess what path the blue team player would take to get to goal, right? Where's the goal? Where's the pressure? And where's the space? The blue team player is gonna almost certainly prefer to dribble through space rather than dribble into pressure. Okay, let's add a couple more players here. So here's our pressure. And once again, pretty much everywhere else on the field is space. So player two for blues is not in an area of open space. They're being marked by this defender. And if you've ever played soccer before, you know that this makes things more difficult when somebody's on you to try and control the ball. Now, if player two can find their way out here, they are now in open space. Or over here, they're in even more open space. This brings us to our first... Principles of play! Okay, here's the first principle. The team with the ball is gonna have an easier time keeping the ball when they play or operate in areas of space. This makes sense, right? If there's no person right next to you trying to take the ball away, it's just easier to control the ball. You have more time. The more space you have, the more time you have. And when you have more time, you're more apt to make a good quality play. Space equals time equals quality. I learned that from one of my favorite coaches growing up. His name was Sean Green. He's actually got his own YouTube channel. It's called Soccer Coach TV. I will link to that in the description. All right, moving on, where were we? Okay, so now we're gonna check out some common patterns of play. And we'll try to see how space and pressure figure into the flow of the game. We'll throw together a simple 4v4 setup on this half field. Okay, now the blue team has the ball. Let's take a look. Where is the pressure? Well, we have a lot of pressure in this central area, right? And we see that the outside channels are mostly, if not all, open space. If the blue team tries to connect passes here or here, they have very little space. Therefore, they have very little time and it's gonna be challenging to make and receive quality passes. If instead, player two from blue can break pressure and find open space out wide, this will give that player more time to receive the ball and make it easier for their team to keep possession. Which brings us to another... Principles of play! The team that has possession of the ball is generally trying to widen the field, which means they want to spread out wide. This helps to give them more space in which to play. It also tends to spread out the defense, which can open up channels through the center of the field. And we'll see how that's important in the next example. But uh, let's finish up this example. So right now, player two has the ball. Where would you say the space is now? Take a look. Remember, space can be here behind the defensive line. Now, if your team plays in a league that calls offsides rule, you can't run past this last line of defenders until your teammate passes the ball. The previous pass we saw was from player one's feet to player two's feet. This next pass is gonna be made by player two into space so that player three can run onto it. We call this type of pass a weighted pass because you have to use just the right amount of force to make sure that the ball will meet up with your running teammate at the right time. The pass in this example is also called a through pass, playing past this defensive line and can be really effective in getting into scoring position. All right, let's take a look at another pattern of play. Once again, we start with all this pressure in the central area. 
And once again, player two from the blue team moves out wide into open space. But this time, player two from the red team is gonna follow, covering the blue player and taking away the space that's around player two from blue. That's gonna make it harder for the blue team to complete this pass. Bad news for blue, right? Well, let's see what happens as a result of this move. Player two from red has taken that pressure from the central area and moved it out to the outside channel, leaving or creating this new pocket of space. If player three from blue can recognize this new area of space, they may be able to break pressure, check back into the space and become a great passing option. If player three can turn quickly, then they'll be set up for another nice potential pass into space. All right, let's look at this. Do you see a through ball opportunity here? That's right, let's see it again. And keep in mind that in this position, player two on the red team can only watch the ball or player two on the blue team who's behind. They can't watch both at the same time, which makes this through pass a tough one to defend. All right, we have two more examples here where we can analyze the importance of space and pressure. Let's take a look at this next scenario. This time we're gonna show it on the full field. So player two from blue will once again move into open space out wide and player one will make the pass. This time though, let's imagine that as the pass is being made, the red team shifts like this. This is pretty common. Red doesn't wanna give player two on blue a direct path to the goal, so they compress or get more compact in this area to take away that option. So right now, here's the pressure. What do you think? Where's the space now? That's right. There is space behind player two on blue. This is an important point. While the blue team's ultimate objective is to move forward, penetrate the defense, and put themselves in position to score, sometimes when there's a lot of pressure in front of or around the ball, we want to remember that there may be space behind the ball, and it might be a good option to relieve pressure by playing back into that space, like this to player one. Then if blue can stretch the field wide on this side, they may be able to play around this pressure and find a better point of attack. Now let's pause this play for a second to mention that while, like we say, it's generally better and easier for the in-possession team to play in areas of space, they're not going to be able to avoid pressure forever. The closer a team gets to the goal, the more pressure they're likely going to encounter, the tighter the space is going to be to work in. Players can keep control and advance the ball in and through areas of pressure. It's just harder to do. It takes more precision, more vision, and it can require a higher quality of play. We're not gonna get into all the specifics here, but suffice it to say that the attacking team will at times need to balance their desire to play in space with their desire to go to goal and take on pressure directly. We see in this final cross that player two is gonna to need to make an aggressive run from the weak side and player four will have to play a very precise pass if they wanna connect around all this pressure. Goal, well done. All right, before we get to the last example, it's probably a good time for an important caveat. This is a video about tactical stuff. And I think that this, this kind of knowledge and information is good for all coaches to have. But if you're a coach of very young players, the priority really is on technical skills, teaching them technical skills rather than some of this tactical stuff. Um, technical skills like making a good balance pass, how to dribble with your laces, those kinds of things. If you have a team that has a tough time making 10 yard passes with consistency and you try to teach them how to relieve pressure by playing it back, it's probably gonna be more frustrating than it's gonna be helpful. Uh, you probably wanna spend more time on those technical skills and when they feel comfortable and confident and are moving the ball around well, then you start to show them some more of this tactical information. Cognitively, as they get older, developmentally, that'll just be easier. When they're younger, it's actually easier for them to learn some of these physical skills. So just keep that in mind. And if you watch these videos, whenever they're ready for the tactical stuff, you'll be ready. All right, let's look at the last example. We're gonna start this one out the same way as all the others. Player two on the blue finds space out wide. Now, as the pass is being made, some of the red team shifts and starts to put pressure on the ball. Player two for blue looks to relieve pressure by playing back to player one. Player four once again looks for space out wide in an attempt to play around the pressure like we saw in the last example. But this time, player one for red is gonna see player four opening up and try to block that pass before it's made. So now all of player one's blue teammates are covered. There's no clear passing option here. Sometimes in situations like this, players will still try to force passes into pressure. But let's take a look at where the space is. 
Do you see it? All of this space was created when Red's player one moved forward. This is a perfect time for Blue's player one to take up space with the dribble. Sometimes players forget that they can take up space with the dribble. And as they dribble forward, Red is forced to react. One of their players is gonna to have to try and stop the attack. And once a red team player commits to stop Blues player one, that should leave a blue team player open. Let's take a look at that whole scenario one more time so we can see the whole play play out. It's important to remember that we don't always have to pass to advance the ball. Sometimes the best thing that you can do is carry it into that space, force the other team to commit, and then play off to an open player. All right, so that's a simple explanation for space and pressure. Hopefully that's been helpful for you. In the next short video, I'm gonna give you some ideas for how to put this knowledge into practice, literally into your soccer practice. All right, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll see you in the next video.